14. Cross my heart and hope to die. Graham lets me stay home the next day because Freak is getting out of the hospital, and I'm right on the front step when the fair Gwen pulls up in her car. Freak is riding in the back. You can barely see him in the window. And he's got this big grin that makes me feel like everything is going to be okay, the way everybody keeps saying. I go, is it okay if I carry him inside? And the fair Gwen says, of course. He has to rest, she says. He stays in the house until I say different. Is that understood? In his room, Freak is right away ordering me around. Bring me this and go do that, and you'd never guess he's been sick. A minor incident, he says, easily corrected by biogenic intervention. You mean that robot stuff? Freak goes, shh, the fair Gwen must not know of the plan. The very idea strikes fear into her heart. Well, it is pretty scary, I say, getting an operation to give you a whole new body. I'm not scared, Freak says. I'm looking forward to it. So when does it happen? Freak gets his far away look, and he says, not sure. Dr. Spivak, she's my doctor. She says maybe a year or two. But how come you need a new body, I ask? How come you can't just stay like you are? Freak shakes his head, like he knows I'm not smart enough to understand. No one stays like they are, he says. Everybody is always changing. My problem is I'm growing on the outside, but not on the inside. He doesn't want to talk about it anymore, which is fine with me. And in another couple of days, everything is back to normal, and we're going to school like always, and everything is going real good until Christmas vacation, when, if you'll excuse the expression, all hell breaks loose. I'm in the down under, trying to get the stupid wrapping paper to cover the stupid presents I got for Graham and Graham when the shouting starts upstairs. Understand, Graham never yells at Graham, not that I can ever remember, and Graham, well, the worst thing she ever does is cry when she's mad. But somebody sure is yelling up there. And so I sneak up the stairs, and I don't even have to put my ear to the door. That's how loud it is. Over my dead body, you will. That's Graham yelling, and her voice is big and full of tears. Graham's voice isn't nearly as loud, and I open the door a crack to hear whatever it is that's made Graham so mad at him. I have an obligation, he's saying. A man has to protect his family. Not with a gun, Graham yells. Not in this house. I won't have it. Oh, I can't stand it. How could they do this to us? How could they? He fooled them, Grim is saying. Just like he fooled Annie. Just like he fooled us once upon a time. Never again, though. That man tries to set foot in this house. I aim to shoot him. No guns, Graham says. You don't know about guns. Of course I do. I was in the army, wasn't I? That was 30 years ago. I know what will happen. Don't you think I've dreamt about it for the last eight years? He'll come in here and he'll take that gun away from you, and then he'll do the shooting. By now I've figured out who they're talking about, and I guess you have too. None other than him, Killer Kane, my father. Maybe they won't let him out, Graham is saying. If they do, they'll give us protection. Sure they will, Grim says, just like they protected our Annie. Next thing, Graham is crying, and you can tell Graham is trying to make her feel better, going, there, there, my dear, I know, I know, there, there. A while later, I hear the cellar stairs creaking. It's Grim, and he knocks on my door. Come on in. Grim comes inside, and for once, he doesn't tell me what a rat hole I'm living in or how it smells like a locker room because I forgot to put my socks in the hamper. He sits on the edge of the bed and folds his hands together. I never think about how old he is because he never acts old, but tonight he's all white and bent and, and his skin is saggy. He's about a thousand years old, and he says, I guess you heard the ruckus. Your grandma gets so upset, bless her heart. Can't abide the idea of violence. Can't say I blame her. Did he escape? I ask. Is that what's happening? Grim shakes his head. He's up for parole. That's dumb. That's so dumb. Grim goes, you hit the nail on the head, son. What I did do, just so you know, I went into court and made it so he won't be allowed within a mile of this house. If he does try to come here, they'll send him back to prison. The judge promised me that much. I say, maybe you should get a gun. Grim doesn't say anything for quite a while, and then he goes, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I can't tell your grandma about it, though, and it breaks my heart to lie to her. That's one thing we've never done. I won't tell. Grim is quiet again, and then he stands up from my bed, and in this real old, tired voice, he says, Everything is going to be okay, Max. I'll make sure of it. But for the next few days, I want you to stay in the house. Promise me you'll do that? Cross my heart, I say. Cross my heart and hope to die.